This video has been produced as part of the Records Access Documentation Project funded by the Department of Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs to help improve access to the records of forgotten Australians and former child migrants. In this video we will guide you through the use of the Excel tool which has been created as part of the Records Access Documentation Project. The tool has been designed to document series and items according to the International Standard on Archival Description, or ISAD-G. It also allows you to apply reference or index terms to the items in your collection to aid their retrieval. For this demonstration, we are using Excel 2007 on a Microsoft PC. If you are using an earlier version of Excel or a Mac computer, the appearance of certain screens may differ. When you first open the tool, you may find that Excel has automatically disabled macros. To use the tool, you will need to enable the macros by clicking Options and Enable this content. The first time you use the tool, you will need to start by registering your organisation. Click Organisation Details and fill in each field. Your Find and Connect ID is the URL of your organisation on the Find and Connect web resource. This ID becomes part of the unique identifier for each series and item in your collection. If you are using this tool in multiple locations, for example, you have copies of the tool in two offices of your organisation, then you can select a different site ID to distinguish one tool from the other. The information you have entered will now appear on the home screen. The next step is to register your users. Click New to enter a user and Save for each entry. When you have entered as many users as required, you can select the person currently using the tool. You can register all potential users in one go or you can register one user to start and then come back and register more when different people use the tool. If you do not select a user, you will be prompted to do so before you enter information about the series, item or index. The series screen is where you describe the groups of records in your collection. Tips for filling in each field can be found by hovering your mouse over the field title. The series ID will be automatically assigned when you click Save. Enter the provenance of the series, or in other words, who created the records, here. Once entered, you can select the provenance from the drop-down list. When describing your records, include any information which applies to all the items in this series. For example, if you have a set of admission registers which all record the same information about each child admitted, describe the information which is recorded at the series level. You will then not need to repeat this information at item level, avoiding duplication. You can use the Processing Notes field to record any details which may still need to be added or to make a note of any changes made. The number of items in the series is displayed here. As you can see, there are currently no items in this series. Once you have entered as much information as you can, save your changes. You will see the series you have added appear in a navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. Once you have entered one or more series, you can now describe any items which form part of the series you have created. Select the series which you are describing items from. If there are no items associated with this series, the fields will be empty. If there are already items in the series and you want to add a new one, click New. Then, fill in the information you know about this item. Most of the fields will be familiar from the series screen. However, there are a couple of additions, such as conservation notes, to record details such as mould or damage. There is also the option to record the digital location of an item, for example, a digitised copy of a photograph. If one item is born digital, so it does not exist in paper form, tick Digital Item Only. If you are entering multiple items for a series which are very similar in their description, you have the option to clone an item. This creates an exact copy of the item with a new unique ID and will automatically include a note in the processing note 
to show how this record was created. You can then edit any details which differ, for example the dates, and save your changes. You can navigate through the items in each series using these arrows. Once you have described an item, you can index it. Select the type of entity you wish to index, for example, a person, organisation, or place. We have included three fields for different forms of names. Enter the name as you see it. A more structured version, for example, surname, comma, first name, and finally, any alternative names that the person may be referred to as. The locator field allows you to pinpoint where an index term appears in an item, for example, the page number of a register. In the additional information field, you can record any other information from the item which may help you identify this person, for example, a date of birth. The more structured the information in this field, the better your ability to search for items at a later date. Keeping well-structured information will also help if, further down the track, you want to export your data to a different system. As with the series, when you save each index term, it will appear in this navigation bar. Double-clicking will take you to that record. You have now documented one group of records within your collection. Information in this tool can be printed or exported into a spreadsheet from both the series and item screens. If you wish to export everything, you can do so from the home page, selecting whether you wish to export series, series and items, or series, items, and the index. Another important function of the tool is the search, which can be accessed via the home screen. The search looks in the title and description fields for series and items and the three name fields and the additional information field for the index. Once you have found what you were looking for, double click to view the record. The final function on the home screen is import. This allows you to import all the data entered into a previous version of the Excel tool. Note that this import button will not allow you to import data captured in other tools or in regular Excel spreadsheets. Once you begin describing your records using this tool or any other system, it is important to remember that it in itself becomes a valuable part of your collection. As such, it is important to ensure it is backed up. For example, you should try to keep a copy in more than one location. And for further information on the index tool, you can refer to the instructions document available via the Find and Connect web resource.